Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're going to have a look at the old Aracastlick settlement in Glenorchy, close to Dalmally. We are going to go up to the ruined settlement of Aracastlick, known as Old Aracastlick now to discern it from a new one which I think, as usual, is a holiday home. Just started up the path and there's some very pretty marsh orchids. I do have my rucksack on, but I'm not going to fool you that it's a, a, a big long walk. It shouldn't be that much of a walk in. My rucksack is because the midges are biting. It's that time of the year. I'm about to head up into woodland. They love my blood. Wow. That was worth the wee push up that wee hill. I have brought a little book with me that explains what all these buildings are. So once I get stopped and have a wee drink of water, then we'll investigate further. These are pretty stunning. Glenorchy is described as the Hungry Glen due to it being formed by a glacier and down at the riverbed where there would be a lot of sediment it would be very rich um, for growing and pasture and that but up the further you would get up the hill the more barren it would become. I'm not saying it here to be honest it, it's stunning here and beautiful and it's really sad nobody lives here. This is the remains of an improver's longhouse. Parts of this story I struggle with and parts of it I don't. It says in the pamphlet that the Society of Improvers was founded by the landed gentry in an attempt to improve the agriculture of Scotland. In that attempt, Cheviot sheep were moved onto this ground in the 1780s. This part of the longhouse obviously has fireplace in it and it would be for the human habitation. And through that wee wall is another compartment where the animals would have lived. If you see there, it's actually a second floor and a second chimney. As part of this whole improvers movement, the Earl of Bradalbin moved up staff from the south of England who apparently had more experience with sheep than their Scottish counterparts. This is a little pamphlet from the local historical society, like a visitor's guide and that attached. But I'm going to be quite honest, my personal view, it's probably more what is not said in the pamphlet that stands out than what actually is. There is much talk of agricultural improvement and these improvers' houses being built. What isn't mentioned is the fact that there was systematic clearance in this area and all other areas after Culloden. Now, I find it hard to believe that many areas here were brutally cleared in parts if people put up resistance they were handcuffed and they were removed i find it difficult to believe that this place in particular people just 
pleasantly walked away from what they had. I don't know. The notes that the guys have written in the book, in my personal opinion, are very romanticised and beige. One phrase which I will point out Martin actually jumped on was this idea that this was an ecologically sound thing that folk were doing, that it was this was a fantastic idea to bring sheep and bring deer into an area that was populated, depopulating the area in the process. Everyone's entitled to their view and good luck to them. But I'm finding it very hard to believe people would have just walked away from somewhere like this. I'm going to read you a wee bit out of this book. I know he looks like he's about to break into the post office. There's no post office here. The midges are mental. I'm going to read a bit out of the book mm -hmm. and the band that's going to react. Then Bradalbin, the sole landowner, initiated a period of agrarian revolution to improve the productivity and profitability of his land, influenced by what was happening in England. What's happening? That sounds like somebody trying to justify kicking people off the land to make profit the way they did in England. Yeah. There were clearances in England too for these sheep and Wales and Ireland, Scotland. Yeah. And I've just been informed these midges aren't Scottish. No, they're not. They were imported. I believe they came from Canada. Canada, would you like your midges back? I would suggest, rant aside, the sheep farming didn't go that well. I don't see any sheep about. This house that was built, obviously, as part of the improvements, um, was used for in around 100 years, and then it too was abandoned. There's lots of pigs down in the glen. What I do notice about pigs is they're quite unobtrusive. They don't seem to take up an awful lot of the landscape compared to sheep dotted everywhere. <coughs> so I'm going to read another sentence out of this fantastic pamphlet. Under the single ownership of the Earls of Bradalbin, the best return on marginal land seemed to be land sports. Yeah. Returning the land to one particular person. Yeah. I expect there's sort of a silver lining at this. One person got rich? The Earls of Bradalbin snuffed out just at the turn of the 20th century. Oh, yeah. So basically sheep are put on the land now to stop things growing because where trees are growing subsidies are not given for farming and that would explain why there's lots of scabby old and not very well looked after sheep roaming about Scotland. Oh well. While it would be a nice sentiment to believe that this site depopulated by natural selection, it's apparent by the Improver's House and the Cheviot Sheep that I would suggest that this was not the case. I feel it's a Neil Oliver style coloniser view of the late 1700s and early 1800s. It is further backed up by the fact that in the area Glenorchy there is a Wapiti cage to house a large natural American deer that will grow more quickly and produce more meat 
than their native Scottish counterparts. Sheep farming and deer hunting were obviously all being pushed in the area. The booklet on the area that we purchased contains no record of names of the people who allegedly abandoned the area, which I find odd, as settlements that were genuinely abandoned and not cleared to kill the Highland culture have records. For instance, Catterley. I will put a link up to Catterley now. Alluding to hardships, the land in the glen was fertile and Dalmally was a bustling settlement only a few miles down the glen and certainly not as isolated as the site is today. I find these sites emotive as we can barely imagine what life must have been like here. So there's another little bit of the history of this area. An area rich with history, both ancient and right up to modern day. It's goodbye from me and the midges. <laughs> Till next time. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. It really helps the channel grow. If you would like to join me on my other media, I leave the links below for Facebook, Instagram and all the usual suspects. And I would like to thank those who have donated a coffee. It's certainly helping me get some more equipment for the filming of everything. And I'll pop that link down below as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.